Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage Richard Nelson, President and CEO of Utah Technology Council. Ladies and gentlemen, if I had to sum up tonight's event in one word, it would be spectacular. As I look about this room, this annual event is about the inductees. It's about our top global technology keynote speakers. But even more so, the Hall of Fame celebration is about you and about our collective success. For example, as we drive down I-15 and see the Adobe Headquarters building, the word that comes to mind is iconic. What a tremendous symbol for the thousands of growth stories and companies our industry has and con continues to be experiencing. As one of our standout CEOs and UTC trustees, Tim Sullivan, head of Ancestry, recently put it, quote, even though we compete for talent with companies like this, it is such a wonderful manifestation of the strength of our industry and region to see these great companies such as Adobe appear, end quote. I totally agree. We have just completed another of our UTC Pulse surveys I'm releasing tonight with a 31% response rate. While the optimism and the growth of our tech companies has stayed consistently strong over the past five years since the difficult financial recession, I was delighted to hear our core technology members report that 56% are growing in terms of revenues, 27% are thriving, and only 4% are declining. This is remarkable. Over 90% are doing. This is all about you. This is remarkable because over 90% are doing extremely well. In addition, 84 of our companies hired 3,000 employees, new employees, in the past 12 months and they currently have 936 open positions. No surprise to you in the industry. In terms of challenges, the talent shortage continues to be our industry's number one issue. To alleviate that concern, UTC has put an increasing focus on rigor and STEM in uh, Utah's K through 20 pipeline. We earlier recognized our terrific STEM students and the counselors and administrators that work so closely with them. On that front, I'm enthused to share with you that we have achieved more breakthrough success in exciting students this year. Here are just three examples of many. First, exciting students in the classroom with our industry execs and trustees presenting Utah scholars to eighth graders to add more rigor to their high school experience. And you get an automatic uh, scholarship to move on. Second, exciting students through engaging our industry in the classroom through our partnership with Junior Achievement. Although intimidating to teach for five hours, and I had to cram for my preparation, I had a great time teaching Miss Moore's Whittier Elementary fourth grade class on why rigor and STEM matters. For a full day in downtown Salt Lake on May 22nd, I had a terrific time with a very, very impressive class of 27 engaged students who were very much up to speed on STEM. They all wrote me a letter of which I'd like to refer to two briefly. Reese. I learned how to be a STEM student from your presentation and that I needed to work hard to be one. When you talked about jobs, it made me think more about the job I wanted to be. I asked myself, am I really interested in weather or does it just sound cool? I liked how you got me excited about my future 
how you explained what we were going to have to do to get a job. And Bryce shared, STEM made me excited for my future. Technology is something I would just love creating and using. If I were to give you advice, I would say that you should talk about technology earlier. I didn't ask him. <laughs> talk about technology earlier because I think kids love technology a lot, and it was underlined. Third example, exciting counselors to excite students. This past June 19th, UTC participated in the annual State Office of Education Counselors Summer Conference in beautiful Heber with 850 middle and high school counselors. Each of our 19 UTC trustees and CEOs presented on two to two classes of counselors. Again, this was to excite the counselors to excite students. In addition, we, com uh, we completed and distributed there a report on Utah's hottest 50 STEM jobs, which was in very, very high demand. With our top UTC priority of talent shortage and thousands of openings in Utah, there is much progress happening on this front. Judy Young, I hope you're here someplace. UTC's executive director, along with our UTC team, deserve much credit for these successes, along with producing this truly outstanding Hall of Fame this evening. Please help me thank Judy and our team for their superb work. Judy, stand up. I think you're over here someplace. In addition, I'm very pleased to report to you that Utah currently has 4,700 technology companies in the IT and clean tech sectors. We have, uh, some of this will be overlapping to what the governor shared, but I think it's very important you understand how much we are the growth engine of this state and its uh, terrific economy. We have over 66,000 technology jobs in 2011, averaging $65,000 a piece or 64% above the average annual non-agricultural wage. These jobs represent 5.5%, you represent 5.5% of Utah's total employees, and notably represent $4.3 billion in payroll or 9% of the state's overall payroll. This is an annual industry increase of nearly 9% over the prior year. So things are really happening in Utah, and Adobe is a grand, grand example of that. In summary, Utah is a spectacular home to a standout group of entrepreneurs and growing companies, you. As our keynote speaker from Adobe can well attest, Utah is not just for technology startups anymore. We've become one of the nation's greatest places to grow an enterprise business. And now, uh, perhaps most importantly of, of all, I'd like to share UTC's deepest gratitude and thanks to Senator Orrin Hatch for his integral role in making our annual Hall of Fame such an incredible celebration by personally inviting our global CEO keynotes over the past decade. This, is an ex uh, this year is, an extraordinary, is extraordinary again as we enjoy the insights and vision of our excellent keynote speaker, Adobe's president and CEO, Shantanu Narayan. On a personal note, and I have very mixed feelings about this, I got a phone call at 12.30 today from Washington, D.C., from Senator Hatch. He was deeply regretful that he couldn't be here. This is the first of 10 that he has missed. Uh, he assured me that he had already met with uh, Mr. Narayan and our keynote was coming. Now, we had a little challenge a couple of years ago with that. Uh, but sadly uh, and very sincerely, Senator Hatch expressed his deep admiration for this community and UTC and the inductees 
tonight and wanted me to express his uh, heartfelt uh, uh, disappointment. He had just come from the White House. Uh, he's in emergency meetings. A very rare Senate vote will take place on Saturday. Uh, and he's a big part of it, as we would expect and know. So it's unfortunate that our great senator's not with us, but when you see him, uh, he continues to help us do great things in this, uh, in this community.